Today, I'll be giving you five pro PC building tips for noobs. Now, these tips may seem very obvious to a lot of you, but just remember, not everyone has a degree in knowing everything from the University of Texas to Far Guy. <laughs> now, now, before you get too triggered by that joke, I am a proud holder of my degree in knowing everything. Although mine is from a fairly dodgy online university, so it may not be worth as much as yours. Tip number one, and this one's very important in my opinion. Always check that all of your components are working before you build it into the case. Now the best way to do this is you take your motherboard, put it on its box, and then build the PC. So you put your CPU in, you put your RAM in, you mount your cooler, you plug your graphics card and your SSD in, and then you power it on. If all of the components work, then you can build your PC into its case. Now you may have one concern around this tip, and that's how do you turn the PC on if you don't have the power button that's on the case. Now there are two ways to go about this depending on what motherboard you have. Some motherboards have power buttons on them and honestly I think this is a minimum requirement for motherboards but for some reason you have to pay like a million dollars for a motherboard with one. Now if you don't have a motherboard with a power button on it, unfortunately switching the PC on does involve doing something dodgy with a screwdriver. Now you know the pins where you plug the reset and the power button of the case into your motherboard? Take a screwdriver and jump the two pins for the power button and this will switch the PC on. And the same process goes for turning it off. You just kind of hold it there for a while and the PC will eventually turn off. Tip number two. Finger tight is almost always tight enough. This genuinely goes for pretty much anything you have to screw down in a PC. If you're mounting a CPU cooler that has thumb screws that you finally tighten it with, the moment that you have to do that final turn, you've gone too far. The same goes for if you're mounting a motherboard to the standoffs in a case. Don't over tighten it, because if you over tighten it, when you unscrew the motherboard, you're gonna unscrew the standoff instead of the actual screw and then it just becomes a nightmare to get the motherboard out. So whenever you're using a screwdriver or tightening anything in a PC, just remember, finger tight is almost always tight enough. And then have a good giggle to yourself. <laughs> Tip number three, cable ties. Now I love cable ties. Cable ties are very useful for cable management. They're a great way to clump cables together and kind of keep them in one place in the case. It's also a very good way to group multiple types of cables together and have them fit in smaller gaps under the PSU shroud or just wherever you can stuff them. The great thing about cable ties is you don't actually have to go buy them because most power supplies and motherboards come with cable ties these days. So just use those and it'll make a huge difference to your cable management. Finger tie. <laughs> okay. Tip number four, and this one isn't technically free unless you already have one, but always use a Torx screwdriver. This one makes your life so much easier because there are a lot of difficult to reach spots in a case and it makes it so much easier that you don't have to rotate your entire hand to turn the screwdriver. Now, I made a video on this a while ago, but I wouldn't recommend getting an iFixit kit if all you do is occasionally build PCs because it comes with like an okay screwdriver and like the rest of the kit is useless for building a PC. So I would recommend just getting any decent Torx screwdriver if you don't already have one. Tip number five, how to check what direction a fan blows air in. This is something that actually took me a really long time to figure out, uh, so hopefully it helps one of you guys. Because you usually do that thing with every fan where you like spin it and then like feel what direction the air is going, and then because it's not spinning that quickly, it's really difficult to tell. Well, the best way to tell is look at where the actual mounting is for the fan motor. That's the direction in which the fan blows. And then finally, I'm gonna give you a bonus tip. Now, unfortunately, this is something that does actually cost a bit of money, but I really would recommend going for it, and that's buying sleeved extension cables. They make a huge difference in the appearance of your case. And you don't have to buy cable mod cables. You can get them for fairly cheaply. Silverstone has really good options, and so do Antec. 
Now, another pro tip around this is that you only have to buy sleeved cables for your graphics card power and your motherboard power because your CPU power cable is in a spot in your case that you can't really see it, especially if you have a big air cooler. So you don't have to spend the 10 or $15 to buy that cable. And with that, let me know in the comment section below if you enjoyed this video. If you found it useful, share it with one of your friends. Maybe it'll help them on their PC building journey. Uh, check out my Instagram and my Twitter accounts for just kind of more David Does Tech stuff. And yeah, subscribe to the channel. I forgot to say that one. That's very important. <laughs> uh, like the video and all of those things. And until the next video, bye-bye.